Hey guys, today I'm going to be making a tutorial on how to create custom entities for Minecraft Bedrock Edition using Blockbench Entity Wizard. This is one of the simplest ways that you guys can create your own entities and you will be able to uh, make your custom models and add animations. And let me show you some examples of some of the mobs that I've made. So I've made, so here I have some penguins, a uh, different variation of pigs, uh, some starfish and shark and a few other different mobs. And I will also show you how you can edit your entities after you've created them. And to do this, it's very simple. Let me show you how it's done. So the first thing you want to do is open up Blockbench. If you guys don't know how to download and install Blockbench, I already made a video about that in my main channel. I'll, I'll leave the link for that in the description. Uh, but all you have to do is go to this website, which will be blockbench.net. And here you get two different options. So if you're on a computer, you can, you can download it from this option. Or if you're using a mobile device like I'm going to be using, uh, you could open up directly from the web browser and you could also install the web app. And another thing that I would recommend doing is if you're doing this on a mobile device, I would recommend connecting a keyboard and a mouse. This will make things a lot easier. But once you have a Blockbench installed, all you want to do is open it. And the first thing you want to do is go up here where it says File and then Plugins. And here where it says Available, you want to look for this one that's called Minecraft Entity Wizard. You just want to select it and click here where it says Install. And you should see the Minecraft Entity Wizard down here on the left side. So you just want to select it and then click here where it says Let's Go. And here it's going to let you create your entity. So the first thing you want to do is give your entity a name. So here you could call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter what it is. But for me, I'm going to be making a rooster. So I'm just going to call it rooster. And then you want to give your entity an identifier. This will help you identify your entity inside of the game. And for the identifier, it has two parts. First, it has the namespace, which is just any letter or word that, that you want. It doesn't really matter what it is. And then these two dots and then the name of your entity. So here I'm going to suggest that you change the namespace. Just change it to something unique and short. So for me, since I'm making a tutorial, I'm just going to call it TUT. I want to use TUT as my namespace and then the name of my entity. Another important thing is that for the identifier, you don't want to use any uppercase letters. If you use an uppercase, it will give you an error. Uh, and you also don't want to use any spaces. If you use a space, it will also give you an error. And so if you want to use a space instead of using a space, use an underscore. But once you've done that, all you want to do is click here it says next. And then you want to select the appearance of your mob. Uh, so here there's a few different templates that you can use. And you will be able to edit the model or create your own. But here it does give you a lot of different options. So you do get the option to use a basic model, which is just this square. Uh, there's also one for a vehicle, armor stand, LA, or any other entity that you want to use. Uh, so for me, I'm, I'm going to be making a rooster. So the one that looks the closest to the entity that I want to make is the chicken. So I'm just going to select this one. Once you selected the appearance, just click here where it says next. And then you want to select the behavior. So if you want to use the same behavior as the entity that you chose, uh, you could just select this option. Uh, but if you want it to behave like a different entity, you also you could also click here where it says different behavior. And here you also get a few different templates for the behavior. So you get, do get this option, which is just a basic behavior that for a mob that just stands still. You also get the option for a basic uh, behavior that's just walking. There's also one for a vehicle or any of the other mobs. Just an example, if I select the creeper, so for the appearance, I made it so it looks like a chicken. Uh, but if I select the behavior for a creeper, it's going to look like a chicken and behave like a creeper. So it's going to get close to the players and then explode. But you guys could, and you guys could choose whichever behavior you want to use for your entity. But for me, since I'm just making a rooster, I'm just going to make it behave the same way as a chicken. So I'm just going to select this one. Well, here where it says same behavior. And once you've selected that, you just want to click next. And here you can select what loot it's going to drop when it when it dies so the first option is uh, the default loot so so it dropped the same loot as the entity that you chose so if, if i leave it like this it's going to drop the same items that a chicken drops when it dies and if you don't want it to drop any loot you can select this option which says no loot or you could also select a uh, custom item so so here you can specify what items you want it to drop uh, to do that you just want to click here where it says add pool and each pool is just a list of items that the entity can drop so to select an item you just want to select this option and here you can select any item in the game that you want your entity to drop uh, you could also use a custom id so if you have a custom item you could just uh, put the id here uh, but for me I, I just wanted to drop apples so i'm just going to select this option and then here you set the minimum amount that it drops and the maximum uh, so so here if i set the maximum to four uh, right now, it's going to drop between 0 and 4 apples. It's, it's just going to select a random amount between 0 and 4 when this entity dies. Uh, but if you want to add more items to this list, you could click here where it says Add Item. And here you could just select what, any other item that you want. So here, I'm just, just an example, I'm going to select Arrow. And same thing again, you set the minimum amount that it's going to drop and the maximum. I'm just going to set this to 3. And from each pool, it's only going to select one item. 
Uh, so from here, it's either going to select the apple or the arrow. It's not going to select both. It's only going to choose one. So here it says probability. Here, the higher the probability, the higher the chance that it's going to drop that specific item. So if I set this one to three, since the apple has a higher probability than arrow, it's more likely that it's going to drop an apple instead of an arrow. But you guys could change this however you want. And you could also keep adding items to this pool. But if you wanted to drop uh, two items at a time instead of just one, uh, what you could do is add another pool. And here, same thing again, you just add as many items to, the, to this list as you want. So here, so here, just an example, I'm going to select this one that says bamboo. So, and same thing again, you also want to change the minimum amount and the maximum. And since this one has two different pools, it's going to drop two different items. So from the first list, it's just going to select either the apple or the arrow. And from the second list, it's going to drop the bamboo. You guys could also keep adding as many items to this pool as you want or keep adding more pools. Once you finish doing that, you just want to select next. And then you want to select the spawn egg for your entity. So here you can just use a regular spawn egg and just change the color. So you, you get the option of changing the base color and the overlay color. So, so you just want to click here and then change it to whatever color you want. You can also change the overlay color, which will be just these dots. Uh, so you can also just change it to whatever color you want. You also get the options to use a custom image. So if you to do that, you just select this option that says custom texture and then you select your image. But for the image, you want to make sure that it's in a PNG format. If it's not in a PNG format, it's not going to work. And I would also recommend not making it too big or it might cause a lot of lag. Or if you don't want to use a spawn egg for your entity, you could also select this option, which is none. But if you choose this option, you will not be able to spawn your entity with the spawn egg. The only way to spawn it will be using a command. Uh, but you guys can select whatever option you want. I'm just going to select the regular spawn egg and then just click next. And this is where it's going to be a little bit different if you're doing this on a mobile device or on a computer. If you're using this on, if you're doing this on a mobile device, you will only get this option, which is export as MC add-on. But if you're doing this on a computer, you will get two other options. If you guys want me to make a tutorial on how to do this on a computer, just let me know. Uh, so here you just want to give your, your add-on a name that you could call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it, since I'm making a rooster, I'm just going to call it rooster. And then you want to add the author's name here. So here you just put your name. So I'm just, since I'm the author, I'm just going to put my name. And you could also select an image for your add-on. But same thing again for the image. You want to make sure it's in a PNG format. It's, if it's not in a PNG format, it, it's not going to work. And if you don't want to use a custom image, then you just leave this blank and it will automatically add one for you. And once you're done, you just want to click here where it says export. And this will download the add-on instantly if you're doing this on a mobile device. So now if you want to edit the model, what you have to do is go down here and click here where it says continue. And it's going to open up the model. And then you just want to close this window. And here it's going to ask you if you want to keep the progress or discard it. You, just, you want to click here where it says keep. And here you could edit your model. Here you get a few different tools to edit it. Uh, so the first tool is the move tool. So you can move all the cubes around in whatever direction you want. You could also change the scale. And you're also able to rotate them. And I already made a video about how to use all these tools in my main channel. I'll leave a link for that video in the description if you guys don't know how to use Blockbench. And something else that I wanted to mention is uh, just as an example, if I resize the size of the head, uh, sometimes the textures will look really bad. Uh, one way to solve this is by going up here where it says File, and then go here where it says Project, and go here where it says Box UV, and change this to Per Face UV. Uh, this will make editing the model a lot easier since the textures won't mess up that much if you change that option. Another thing that I want to mention is that if you add a cube that is not part of this model, just as an example, if I add a cube on top of this uh, chicken's head, uh, once I've added this cube here, if I if I select the head and I try giving it rotation, uh, that block doesn't move with the head. Uh, the reason for that is because this cube is not it's not in the same group as the other cubes that are part of the head. So to solve this, what you have to what you could do is just uh, grab this cube and play, just place it in the same uh, group as the head. This will make it so when you move the head, the that block also moves with the rest of the with the rest of the group. It's also important when you make animations because if the entity uh, moves its head in the animation. If you don't add the cube that you added to the same group, uh, it's not going to move with the other ones. And if you want to change the textures, you could also go over here where it says paint and paint the textures. Uh, you also get a few different tools here that you can use to, to change the texture. Like I said, I already made a tutorial about this, so I'm not, so not going to go over it. And now I'm just going to edit the model, but I'm just going to skip over this part. And this is the model that I created, but you guys can change it however you guys like. But now let me show you how you can change the animations. So if you want to change the animations, all you have to do is go up here where it says animate. 
and then select this option here and here there is already a few animations so there's one for when it's a baby a general and one for when it's moving and if you guys want to replace the animations here so here i'm just going to replace uh, this one that's the moving animation for when it's walking or just moving all you have to do is delete it but you also want to make sure that it has once you replace it, that you just want to make sure that it has the exact same name. So here, first, it has a name animation, then the name of your entity. For mine, it's just called Rooster, and then the name of the animation, which is just Move. So when when you replace this one, you want to make sure it has the exact same name. So here, I'm just gonna first, I'm just gonna delete it, and then to create a new animation, you just want to click here. Where you just want to click the circle with the plus sign. And like I said, if you just if you're gonna replace an animation, you want to make sure it had the it has the exact same name as the one you deleted. So First, it has the name animation, then the name of your entity, and then the one I'm replacing was just called move. So I'm just going to rename it to move here. And since I want it to loop, I'm just going to select this option and then click confirm. And here I'm just going to create the animation, but I'm just going to fast forward this. And it's the animation that I created. So once you finish editing your model, all you want to do is export it. Uh, so here you just want to go here where it says file and then go here where it says export and then select this option that says export as export MC add-on and it should download the add-on again and it should add like a number one or a two and I'll show you how to switch that right now in case you have a problem and now if you wanted to you could already install this add-on into your game uh, but if you want to edit it a little bit more I'll show you how to do it right now and another thing that I want to mention is if you're doing this on a mobile device uh, whenever the add-on downloads sometimes it will it will change it from from a dot mc add-on to a dot zip if it does that you want to change it to do that just just open up a file browser if you don't have one you could just download one from the play store and you want to look for the add-on that you just downloaded most of the time it will be in your downloads folder when it downloaded this add-on it at the end it added a dot zip if it added this at the end you want to make you want to remove this to do that you just want to select the add-on and you want to look for the option to rename it so here i'm just going to click rename and you want to remove this dot zip and you want to change the just remove this just make sure it says dot mc add-on and just click rename and now you should be able to install it into your game and if you wanted to keep editing your add-on what i would recommend doing is using this application which is bridge v2 i also made a tutorial how to download it and use it on my main channel I'll also leave a link for that in the description so if you want to keep editing your add-on using bridge v2 you just want to open it and to import your project into Bridge V2, you want to go here where it says project and then click here where it says import project. And then you just want to, it should open up a file explorer and you just want to look for the add-on that you just created. So for me, it's just this one that's called Rooster. And like I said, if, if it has a dot zip at the end, it's not going to import into Bridge. So you want to make sure you remove the dot zip or this might cause a problem. So here I'm just going to select the add-on that I just created. And it should import directly into Bridge. And here you could edit all the... Uh, so here, this red one is where all the behaviors are. So if you want to edit the behaviors from your entity, you could uh, edit them here. You could also edit the resources. So here, this blue one, this is where all the resources are. So the textures, the models, or the animations, anything you want to change here, you could edit it here. So just like an example, if I want to change some of the behaviors from my entity, I could, say, I could go here in this red one and select my entity. And here I could edit a few different, I could edit all the components. So just an example, if I wanted to change its health. So right now the health that it has, is just set to four, uh, but I could change this to whatever I want. So out here, just an example, I want to change it to eight. Uh, you could also change the movement. So if your entity is moving too slow or too fast, you could change this uh, to a different number to, to make it faster or, sl or slower, whatever you want. And there's a lot of other different things that you could change. Like I said, I already made a tutorial about this, so I'm not going to go over this. But here, since it has all the same behaviors as a, ch as a chicken, uh, it lays eggs. But since this is a rooster, I don't want it to uh, drop any eggs. So I could... Uh, remove this component just delete it and this will make it so it stops dropping eggs i could also change this uh, so it drops a different item instead of an egg so just an example i'm going to make it so this entity drops diamonds but you can change this around however you want well, so once you're done editing your add-on on in bridge v2 uh first just want to save in all the changes that you've made and to export it as an add-on uh, you want to go here where these three dots are at and you want to click here it says export as and then you can either save it as a bridge project or just uh save it as an add-on so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna save it as an add-on so i can install it in my game so i'm just gonna click this option and then you click this uh green arrow and this should download the add-on again and then all you have to do is install it and let me show you how that looks. So once you're in the game, you just want to install your add-on. I'm not going to go over that since there are a lot of other videos that show you how to do that. But you just want to make sure you have the behavior pack and the resource pack activated or this will not work. You might have a lot of issues. Once you have that installed, uh, you just want to start the game.
And once you're in the game, there's two ways that you could spawn your entity. So you could go into the creative inventory and search for the entity that you created. So I called mine rooster. So this does, and, I could, and you could just grab the spawn egg from here. And the other way that you could summon is just using the command. So you just uh, do slash summon and then the identifier. So for me, I, I put TUT and then rooster as my identifier. And then if I activate this command, this summons the rooster. Or like I said, you could just use the spawn egg. And this mob is working fine and it's and it's also using the animations that I added to it. And when I kill it, it drops the loot that I said. So right now it's dropping apples and bamboo. And that's pretty much it. If you guys have any problems or any questions, just let me know. Or if you guys want me to make a tutorial on anything else, just leave that in the comments.